Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's video is part two of publications in residency. A while ago, I had posted a video on my channel where I had talked about seven ways in which you can increase your chances of coming across an interesting case for publication. Today, I'll be talking about what to do after you have an interesting case that you want to write a case report about. For those of you who are new here, my name is Anmol. I'm a doctor based in India. And on this channel, I talk about all the things relevant to being a dermatologist and a doctor in India that I learned along the way. If you're just starting with your publication journey in dermatology or you've just started your residency, I think case reports are a good place to begin. In my previous videos, I've given you a brief orientation uh, on how to get started. So if you haven't seen this video, do watch it. I'm adding a link in the description. If you have an interesting case or a unique finding that you wish to write a case report about, that you wish to publish, but do not know how to get started, I think you'll find this video quite helpful. I'll be guiding you today step by step on how to write a case report. This may not be a universal method, this is not how everyone may do it, but this is how I go about it. So let's find out. So step one is review of literature. Review of literature basically means reading up on what is already known or what is already published about your topic. Before you start writing your case report, you need to know what makes your case unique, right? For that, you need to know what is already known about it, what has already been reported about it. Only then will you be able to write about how your case is unique and how it is adding to the literature. Review of literature will also give you an idea whether your case is really unique or worth reporting about. Because if while doing your review of literature, uh, you realize that what you wanted to report about your case has already been reported multiple times, it's not that rare or unique, then it's better to not pursue it further and drop it right there and not waste your time. So that's the importance and the purpose of review of literature. Now let's talk about how it's done. Start your review of literature from any standard textbook of your choice. I usually do it from books. So what you have to do is read the topic that your case is about. Now as you read the topic from the textbook, whatever points that you find are important or uh, relevant to your case or worth mentioning in your case report, start writing them down separately in a separate Word document. It's better that you don't just copy paste it from the textbook and rather write them in your own words. So basically you have to make your own personal notes in Word format of that topic from a standard textbook. That's step one. While making these personal notes, try to make them heading wise as they have been mentioned in the textbook. Introduction, epidemiology, idiopathogenesis, uh, clinical features, investigations and treatment. So make these headings in that work document and mention the relevant points in that document under those headings. If you do it this way, later on it becomes very easy while writing the discussion of your case report. So by the end of this process, you have your own notes, you have a basic framework about that topic in your own words from a standard textbook and also you've understood the topic that your case is about. So for review of literature, first reading the topic from a standard textbook is very important. A, to get a basic framework for your case report and B, to also understand the topic. The next step in review of literature is reading about uh, the topic from articles. So the textbook reading gave you a basic framework and a basic understanding of the topic and articles will update you about the recent information and recent updates related to your case topic. So this is how you do review of literature from articles. Go to PubMed or Google Scholar. In the search bar, type the heading of your case report, basically whatever the topic of your case report is, and you'll come across a whole bunch of academic articles related to your topic. Start downloading them for reading. How many articles you're supposed to review for review of literature depends, it varies on case to case basis. It also depends on how unique or rare your case is. I usually prefer to review at least 10 to 12 articles about that topic, at least. There are four tips on how to review literature from articles efficiently. Number one, be as specific as possible when you're searching for articles related to your case report. For example, if I want to write uh, about an interesting case of a glomus tumor on the leg with atypical histopathological findings, I won't just search glomus tumor. It's better if I search for glomus tumor on the leg or extra digital glomus tumor or extra digital glomus tumor with XYZ atypical histopathological findings. You have to narrow down your searches systematically based on what makes your case unique. Example, like I just said, glomus tumor plus extra digital plus on the leg plus with atypical histopathological features. So be very specific while you're searching and look for specific literature related to what makes your case unique. Number two, here's a useful trick. 
uh, if you're unable to find enough number of articles related to your topic, here's uh, something that might help. Go to the references section of the articles that you find and there you'll find many more articles related to your topic. So this is another place to look for articles relevant to your case report topic. Number three, read articles that are as recent as possible. It's better if they're not older than 10 years. Obviously, if it's a very nice article, very similar to your case, you can refer to it. So this is not a hard and fast rule. It's just preferable to refer to recently published articles as far as possible. Uh, number four, make sure that the articles that you're referring to are from credible sources, preferably uh, published in esteemed indexed journals. Uh, who have cited their own sources that will make your ROL more credible. Once you've downloaded 10 to 15 recent legitimate articles related to your case report, start reading them and as you read, do the same thing that you did while reading the textbook. So start reviewing the articles briefly one by one and as you read them, whatever points that you find are important or relevant to your case report that you want to write about, start adding them to those notes that you made from the textbook, those heading wise notes. So start adding those points under those respective headings. Make sure that you add only important and relevant points from those articles and better that you add them under the corresponding headings. Again, it's very important that whatever points that you are taking from these articles, you don't just copy paste them, uh, you write them in your own words after understanding them to later avoid issues related to plagiarism. Now, as you add these points from the articles to your own notes, make sure that you add the references, like you mention the references at the end of those points in brackets. So this is how you're supposed to cite the respective references there and then at the end of it. We'll do the numbering part of the references later, but while you are adding these points, just add the name of the article uh, at the end of it so that we know where we have taken this text from, what is the source of this text, and so that it's easier to do the referencing part later. You can number them later. Once you've done this, the difficult part is over. The next step is very simple, writing the case report, just putting it all together. These are the basic headings in a case report. Each journal has their own format and you can alter that later depending on where you are submitting your case report. But basically you have these headings, abstract, introduction, case report, discussion and conclusion. The word limit for case reports is usually less than a thousand words. Depends on journal to journal. Some journals allow up to 1500 to 2000 words as well, but it's important to keep it brief. So try to include only extremely important and relevant points. I'm going to tell you how to go about writing under each of these headings. I usually start from the discussion section because that forms the major bulk of your paper. So once that is done, 80% of your work is done. Discussion is basically writing about basic important information related to that topic and how those things were different in your case. A basic format would be to start with epidemiology, then etiology, pathogenesis, clinical features, uh, findings on bedside tests and dermoscopy, histopathological findings, and finally treatment. You don't have to mention these headings in the discussion. This is just a format for you. This is just a basic format to write the discussion paragraph wise. So in the discussion section, within each of these headings, you have to discuss and highlight how things were different or similar in your case compared to what's already published about the topic. So you already have your heading wise notes prepared uh, while doing review of literature. Just add them here compile them in that order and just add and discuss the findings from your case, how they were similar or dissimilar. So mention the peculiarities of your case with respect to each of these headings. After discussion, write the conclusion, which is just a few lines on how your case is unique and how it adds to the existing literature. So summarize the new findings observed. Basically, why are you reporting this case? Now you write the rest of the sections, which is very simple. Abstract is a 200 to 300 word short paragraph, briefly introducing the topic and what unique findings are you going to report through this case? Here's an example. Introduction is a short paragraph about the disease, basic things like definition, basic epidemiology, and introduction of what you are going to report. Then comes your case report section where you tell the story of how an X year old male or female presented with so-and-so complaints and whatever you did next, history, examination, bedside tests, investigations, dermoscopy, histopathology, treatment given. So it's easy to write and self-explanatory. Discussion and conclusion you've already written, then comes references. Referencing is the last thing that you're supposed to do. Once you've finalized the manuscript, shown it to your seniors and faculty, all the corrections and changes have been made, you have adjusted the word limit, then do the referencing part. Whatever references you have cited in brackets while preparing your case report, list them in this section in the order that they have been cited in the report. This is very important. They have to be listed in the order that they have been cited in the manuscript. Always write the references in Vancouver format. You can look up the internet for more details on what that is. 
Done. Your case report manuscript is ready. Now all you need to do is prepare figures or add tables if you want. For preparing figures, you need good clinical photographs in a green background with the patient identity hidden. Then dermoscopy images or histopathology images, whatever is relevant to your case. The exact specifics of how to prepare figures I'll cover in the next video where I'll talk about how you how to submit your manuscript to a journal. The format, resolution, the basic specifics on how to prepare the figures vary depending on journal to journal. So for that, you need to refer to the instructions for authors part. Uh, on the journal website. After the references heading, add a heading that says figure legends and label your figures. This is an example of figure legends. That's it. Uh, in the next video, which is part three of publications in dermatology, I will be talking about how to submit your paper to a journal. So subscribe and stay tuned. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. For any queries, connect with me via email or on Instagram. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.